Hello everybody and welcome to this video. In this video we are going to go over mail merge and we're going to go over everything in the syllabus about mail merge. We are working with syllabus 9626 which is IT information technology for AS and A level and this is the syllabus for 2022, 2023 and 2024. If you are watching this video from the future e.g. 2025, probably it won't have changed much, but better check the syllabus just to be on the safe side. So I went down to the mail merge chapter and I took all these points and I moved them into my checklist and we'll be working through this checklist one by one. Before we get started, let's have a look at my data file. I created this data file which has two sheets, company info and client list. And the client list has a name, an email, a balance and a due date. And we're going to use this client list to demonstrate some of the topics in mail merge. Normally, when you're using mail merge, you obviously have a lot more clients than this. This is just for demonstration purposes. So let's get started. Okay, before we get started, let's have a look at our source data. I created this very small spreadsheet file just to demonstrate mail merge. If we have a look at what's inside, we see the first sheet is all about the company information. The second sheet is the client data, which contains information about our clients. And the third sheet contains offers, which contains information about our offers. So we're going to use this data sheet to create a big email or big letter, which we send out to all multiple clients. Let's start by right-clicking, clicking on New, and clicking on Microsoft Word document to create a new Microsoft Word document, and we'll just call it Letters. Enter to open it up. Start with Mailings. We click on Mailings. And we first thing we have to do is link our data file. We use an existing list. contacts and we're going to import the client list we're going to link the client list sheet we don't need to worry about the company info and the offers it's the client data which we're interested in also make sure that this button is checked which makes sure that uh, the first row of data contains headers and now let's write a very simple poletta hello and then we're going to insert the client's name. So we go to insert mail merge field and click on name. Your balance is balance. Kind regards. And then here I'm going to add my own name or the name of whoever is performing the mail merge. For now, I'm going to include a temporarily just this squared bracket and sign. So I remember I have to fix it later. Now that we have a very simple letter with name and balance, we're going to click on preview results. And as you can see, it automatically fills in the first name, the name from the name field, and it also fills in the balance. And we can have a look to see what happens to the different clients. We have eight. We can also click on finish and merge. And we can send all these documents, all these pages straight to the printer. We can also edit individual documents. This is going to create a new Word file 
with all eight clients. Let's click and see what happens. Here we have Zion, Janet, Cotton, etc. So that covers how to use, create, and edit source data. And we also learned how to add fields. Next, we're going to sort and filter recipients. OK, to filter and sort our recipient list is very easy. We simply go to edit recipient list. And over here, we have sort and filter. Click on sort. And for example, we can sort by balance, ascending with the lowest balance first and then the highest balance above. Later, I mean. And here we go from negative 38 up to 41. We could also sort by alphabetical order or whatever you like. We can also filter, for example, if we want to only include uh, records or recipients with a negative balance, less than or equal to zero. We filter out all those recipients who have a positive balance. So we only want to send this letter to people who are behind on their payments, in other words. And now when we click on preview, we see we only have two recipients. And that's all about sorting, sorting and filtering recipients. Next, we will talk about embedding a chart and a table. Let us go back to our data file. It's read-only. That's because it's linked to the Word document. So let's click on read-only. And let's just uh, take this chart and copy it by pressing Ctrl-C. And then we're going to go to our letters document and say, here is an overview of our offers. We're going to go to paste. On the home, we have paste, but we want to pick use destination theme and link data or keep source formatting and link data. The key is in the link data. So we are not copying a chart as it is now, but we're linking the chart back to the original data. So if I change the original data, it's also going to change here. Let's save and let's close this file. And right now we have a read only context, so I'm going to close it too. And I'm going to read open it. And I'm going to reopen it. Let's change this to 16, for example, and this chart changes. Save it, Control S. Those and let's reopen letters. And now you can see a weird message. All it's really saying is, hey, we are uh, connected to an outside document. Uh, is that okay? I say, yeah, that's okay. And here we have the chart. It's still the old version, but I'm going to select it and press F9. And when I press F9, Excel opens. I have to click on read only again. And it automatically updates the chart. Remember, F9 means update. This is going to come up again later. OK, just to declutter our document, let's delete our 
graph. And let's also go to the recipient list and let's remove the sort and also remove the filter. Okay. Okay. And then let's go back to our checklist. And here we have uh, done embed chart and table, and we've also done link a master document. Next, we want to talk about specify rules. We have skip if, and we also have if then else. Skip if is basically the same as using uh, filter. I don't know why we would use skip if instead of filter, but it's in the syllabus, so let's learn it. We just you go to rules and you just simply click skip record if and here we put in the rule so let's say skip record if balance is less than or equal to zero okay let's save it and now what you should know about using skip if is it doesn't show up in the preview results so even though we're trying to skip some of the records that's weird So even though we're trying to skip some of the records, it doesn't show up in the preview results. But when we click on finish and merge, it will show up. So as you can see, in this case, we only have one, two, three, four, five, six, because those with a negative balance have been skipped. Anyway, I recommend you rather use filter because it's more intuitive and easy to understand. Let's remove the skip if. Next, we want to use an if. Click on rules. If then else. Let's say that if the balance is less than or equal to, or let's say if it's less than zero, we're going to include the following text. Uh, please do not forget. To pay your balance. Otherwise, all other cases we want to just simply say thanks for being a valued customer and then okay so now let's preview the results and you will see that we will see that whenever the balance is negative it says please do not forget to pay your balance and if the balance is positive, it says thanks for being a valued customer. And that explains these two rules, skip if, skip if, and if then else. Next, we'll be talking about fill in and ask. You have noticed that I've put my name here, and this name is not associate, is not anywhere in my data file. So I'm gonna say that whoever is performing the mail merge should fill out their own name here to do this we use a simple rule called fill in and then for the prompt we're just gonna say uh, type your name and the default task is text is going to be name we're going to click ask once. If I don't click ask once, it's going to ask for every single recipient. That's going to take too much time. So 
I'm going to click on ask once. I'm going to click. Let's click on OK. Now I'm going to put my name here, Mr. Paul. OK. And as you can see, it automatically fills it out. Preview results. Next, let's click on finish and merge. And you will see that whenever I merge it, it's going to ask whoever is performing the merge to fill out their name. Let's click on cancel. Okay. Another thing we can do is use ask. Ask does basically the same thing, but it fills out a value not only in one part, but in multiple parts. So let me just very quickly press Alt F9, and it shows the code that we have so far. This is very useful. Let's delete this fill in. And instead of that, we're going to put in bookmarks. So I'm going to press Control F9 to add these curly brackets and add my own code. We're going to start very simply. For now, all I'm going to do is write a bookmark here. And the bookmark's name is guide name. Let's take this tag, Control V, Control C, and Control V. And up here, I'm going to write my name is, and I'm going to paste the same bookmark, comma, and I will be your guide. In fact, I think I have an extra space over here. No, oh, it should be fine. Okay. Now, I've put a bookmark over here, and I've put a bookmark at the end. And I'm going to press Control S, Alt F9 to go back into the regular view. And we're going to go to Rules, Ask. Oh, let's press Escape. Normally, rules like this, which apply to the whole document, I like to put them all the way at the front, the very first character. Rules ask and then the bookmark was called guide name i'm gonna click here ask once input your name and we're going to have the default value here and click on ok uh mr paul doesn't work because probably because it's not exactly the same. So let's copy paste. Right, so you have to make sure that the, the guide name is exactly, you have to make sure that the bookmark name is exactly the same as the rule we're using. Okay, that's it for fill and ask. And next, we're going to learn about date and time field, document properties, and calculated fields. To insert a field, we simply go to Insert. And over here, we have a whole bunch of things we can insert. The easiest thing to do is to go to Quick Parts. And here, we can directly insert a document property or 
we can go to field. And for example, I would like to insert the address. At, what am I saying? The date. The date and the time at which this document was created. So here we have date. And I'm going to pick this format and click on OK. And as you can see, because I have control of nine pushed, it forms, uh, we see the field. Let's press control of nine again. Oh, excuse me, alt F9. We see that it has the 6th of April. If I want to, if I click on it and I want to update it, I click over here. Let's demonstrate the same thing with the time. This will include the seconds. Click on OK. And here we have the current time. If I want to update the value, just click on it and right click update field. Another way to update it is just by pressing, is just to press the F9 button. Select it. That's F9. We can also insert document properties in the same way. For example, we can set the author. Right now, the author is just a user with which I'm logged in. And we can also insert a function. For example, let's say that this is in Euro. So I'm just going to type EUR in front, and I'm going to say you can play in the in the local currency in the amount of now here, let's say uh, We're going to take this value and we're going to multiply it by 20. Quick parts, field, formula. Let's just say 20 over here. 22 multiplied by 20. And we're going to pick the number format, which is going to be this number format. Or let's do like this one. But let's replace this pound sign with MDL. Let's remove this in case this is what we usually use for negative numbers. Let's press out of nine. And we see that we've got 22 multiplied by 20. But we don't want 22 multiplied by 20. We want the merge field multiplied by 20. So I'm going to delete this. And I'm going to, so let's delete this. And let's go back to mailings. And let's go to insert merge field. And here we insert the balance. So now we have the merge field multiplied by 20. Let's press Alt F9 to go back into the preview mode. And let's see if this function works right. Furthermore, we also perhaps we want to change this format. So this is where this Alt F9 really comes in handy. If we want to change this format to any number format, we can just take the formatting 
uh, instructions, which was given to us automatically by the by the formula field, which we uh, got when we clicked on insert formula using quick parts. And we're just going to copy paste it over here. And we're just going to change this from MDL to EUR. In fact, let's write this over here to say this is equivalent. This is equivalent. Pretty good. So that shows us how to import date and time fields, document properties, and calculated fields. Okay, so there's one more thing I want to show you, which is nested ifs. This is not really specifically in the curriculum, but I've seen past papers uh, where they ask for nested ifs. So remember we have an if, which is please do not forget to pay your balance. If the balance is less than zero, thanks for being a valued customer. We're going to say if the balance is less than zero then look at another if so if the balance is less than zero we're going to check something we're going to check if the due date is before or after the current date so i'm gonna delete this and then let's go here and insert another if then else in its place and we're gonna say uh, date, due date is, if the due date is less than or equal to the date today, in this case we say you are late your membership please don't forget to pay and otherwise we will say uh, please don't forget to pay the due date is coming up soon Let's click on OK. So now we have an if within an if. This is called a nested if. So in summary, if the balance is less than zero, then check if the due date is passed or not. And if it has passed, you say this. And if not, we say that. And then if the balance is zero or more, we say thanks for being a valued customer. Let's check it out out of nine. Negative 38. The due date is coming up soon. Negative one, you are late. Let's have a look and see if instead of using a fixed date number, I can use a formula. I'm gonna press Control F9. I'm going to use the same function we had over here. And let's see if it works.
Yeah, it works like this. Okay, next we're going to learn about error checking and performing mail merge, which are two very simple topics. So when they're talking about checking, they're really talking about this using the spell checker. Here we see we have one spelling mistake because there should be a dot after Mr. The other thing you should be aware of is that a lot of uh, mistakes happen uh, with the formatting. So for example, if I scroll forward, I see that this is supposed to be negative 38 euros, but it looks like 38 euros. So in order, so we have to manually check as well, because not all records are going to be the same. In order to fix this, one thing we can do is we can go to insert index field formula and we just say uh, negative 76.5 zero and pick a number format like this one and now we're just going to copy the formatting like they do it here but we're going to modify it for our own needs Control C, Control V, and then write A U R here or negative A U R. And forget about these brackets. There we go. And let's do the same for MDL as well. And when it comes to perform mail merge, it's what we've already done. We simply click on mailings and click on finish and merge. And we've already seen edit individual documents where we create a new Word file. We can also print documents, in which case we have the option to print to PDF. or you can send it to your actual printer. So that covers error checking and perform mail merge. Finally, we have to talk about uh, creating a master document for letters. We've already seen it. And the very last topic is for labels. So let's do it, shall we? To create labels, the best thing to do is first go up here to create labels and we're going to create a new document. But before we do that, it would be best to pick which label we want. So let's click on options. And here we can select continuous feed printers or page printers. It's easier uh, to imagine printing on A4s. So let's assume we've got a page printer which prints out only on A4s. And here we have vendors. Different vendors have different formats for example, Post-it or whatever. Let's stick to Microsoft and let's pick Vertia page and let's stick to landscape mode. If you want to create your own custom label dimensions, you can click here on new label and set the width and the height down here and set the 
side margins and the top margins and the vertical and horizontal pitch, etc. But I'm pretty satisfied with this one. So let's click on OK. And then uh, we're going to click on New Document. And now we have uh, already where uh, a layout for where the labels are going to end up. But because this is a new document, we have to reconnect our data file. Let's reconnect it. And now let's type membership card. Each membership card will contain the name and the email address. And let's go home and right align this. careful it's very tricky uh, to change the beginning of the card because you keep jumping up above where the cards start here we go and in mailings we can click on preview ah we have to be on uh, we're right now we're on letters mode so it's only showing one field per page, but on labels mode, it's going to show multiple fields per page. We pick the same label as we picked before. And let's reinsert. Here we go. What was it? Membership ID. And then we'll go and insert name, email. And let's remove the extra line spacing down here. And let's also align it to the right hand side. And when we want to uh, go to out of nine to do a preview, but before we see and the results, we always have to click on update labels. So if you make any change, for example, I'm going to ball and underline membership ID. I won't see what it looks like on the other labels until I click on update labels. Oops. What's going on here? Okay, better. And now we have for each of our clients a membership ID. And that was all for May and March. I hope this was useful for you. Uh, remember, learning all of these skills in isolation is not going to help you on your exam. You're going to need to practice. So if you want to get a lot of practice, I recommend the YouTube channel, Finn's Papers. Finn's Papers walks uh, through a lot of past paper solutions. Okay, good luck on your exams. Bye, from, bye for now.